Welcome to Primitive Era 10,000 BC, a city building war game that brings out your primal instincts. Or in the very least, I better be getting like an attack boost for this cloak and this saber tooth necklace that I'm wearing. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the things you need to know about the game, including things in your city, like the buildings you'll need to upgrade, the research, and the troops that you'll unlock and train. And then I'll give you a look outside your city at the wide world of animals and beasts that you'll battle, barbarians that you'll smash, and the world map. But before I begin, allow me to thank the sponsors of this video, the makers of Primitive Era 10,000 BC. If you download using my link in the description, that will support the channel and let the developers know that I sent you their way. A big thank you again to Primitive Era for sponsoring today's video. Now I've got good news for you. At the start of the game, there's no critical decision you have to make that will dramatically impact your trajectory. There's no commanders you need to pick at the start. There's no civilization that you need to choose before you really even know what you're doing. You can dive right in and get started building up your city when you start fresh. Now, there are a number of critical buildings in your city, starting with the Chief's Hall. This is kind of like your city hall. It blocks the progress to all of the other buildings in your city. It determines their maximum level. It also will be very important as you progress your chapter quests. From here, there are troop training buildings that are very important. And unlike in other games where training troops and the tier of troops that you ultimately can train is determined by your research, the higher level your troop training building is the higher tier of troop that you can go and train. This is a very big distinction from other city building war games you've played. And the look of the troops here definitely progresses very significantly as you advance to higher and higher tiers of troops. Of course, I think the troops that look the most badass are your cavalry units. And if I give you a look at this, I mean, we've got this dude riding a cheetah. We've got this, I mean, rhino, uh, saber tooth tiger. And then all the way at the end here, whoa. Okay, I mean, look, that dude's kind of got the same cloak I have, actually. It's, it's, it's actually almost the same thing. Now, in addition to the training buildings, there are many economy-based buildings that are absolutely critical to your progression. For example, these living tents let you have more villagers. You can see my villager count in the upper left. Some buildings require you to have more villagers in order to create them. Other buildings are purely production-based. For example, this logging shed produces lumber. Now, the thing that's really cool about the production buildings in this game is that you can just wait for production to complete, but also you can push the rapid button and rapid production has a chance to instantly give you a certain amount of resources, which I really like. There are definitely times where I hustle out certain resources. In addition, unlike other games, it's very critical that you increase your resource storage in this game. So for example, this is my lumber yard. This is where I store lumber. It is determining the maximum amount of lumber I can have in my city. This is a big deal. So I could upgrade this building. It's actually going to take two hours. Let's freaking do it. But there are other resources. In fact, you can see all of them at the top of your screen that you'll want to have a high storage capacity for. This includes pelts and food and water. Um, it includes charcoal and uh, rocks, stone that you'll need to build buildings. Making sure that you upgrade these depots for resource storage is just very, very critical. Now, of course, something that you need to work on in your city is your research. That's done at the Foreteller's Dome. If I enter into the Foreteller's Dome, I'll call attention to just a couple things really quickly, which is that you can research the way to advance troops from a low tier to a high tier. So I always like when a game lets you promote a lower tier troop to a higher tier of troop. And in this case, you can promote low tier troops to high tier troops through your research. So although upgrading the building itself will let you create from scratch higher tier troops in order to upgrade low to high, you'll need to do a little bit of research. So if you're going to prioritize something, I think that's really great. Also, of course, your economy is very crucial in making sure you have the resources to do all of the things you need to do. And there are troop-based buffs that you can also work on. I haven't done this yet. All the way in the bottom talent trees. There's two other buildings I want to show you before we get a look at the world map. One of them is your clan castle. Now, your clan castle determines a number of things. If you want to know anything about a building, you can tap the info button to get more information. This is increasing the 
reinforcement capacity of my city, but more importantly, improving my helps, giving me more of them and making them more effective. Um, so this, if I smash more info, gives you a full rundown on all of the buffs you get as you level up this building. You probably should level up your clan, clan castle as you level up your um, main building over here, the Chief's Hall. I have definitely been slacking on that front. Now, the other building, the final building I want to show you before we go explore, is the Heroes Lodge. This is where you recruit heroes, and I want to give you an overview of the heroes in this game. You get a number of free summons every single day. For example, I can do this legendary recruit, and oh my gosh, I actually shot the moon, baby. Alpha, I actually just got a legendary, and it announces at the top of the screen, by the way, uh, that somebody got a legendary. Wow, dude. I just got a freaking legendary. That's dope. I, I actually, that's the first one that I have recruited from a scroll, which feels pretty cool. Cool to have done that for the video. We'll do a couple recruits over here as well. There are different tiers of recruits that you can do. This is the blue tier, which gave me a blue quality hero. But if I give you a look at all of the heroes in the game, heroes in this game have multiple functions. One is that you can take them out into the world and battle which is pretty cool. That new hero that I just unlocked is right over here, the Alpha Wolf. Now, if I wanted to work on one of the heroes I've already started on here, like this White Lion, I obtained him simply by logging into the game over a series of days, um, and you can get him as well if you download the game. Link is in the description. If I want to advance this hero, there's a couple things I can do. First of all, you can see he's got a lot of skills. I can unlock new skills by spending some resources, which I will do. In addition... I can power up my skills by using this Ritual Dew, and that is giving me a boost, in this case, to the number of warriors I can bring in my squad. These are important upgrades to do here. I'll smash off a couple upgrades over here, maybe one more, and I can probably unlock another skill. Can I? Ah, I need a Stellar Hero Bracelet. All right, I'm not quite there yet for more skills, but you get the idea. You can unlock more skills on your commander, and also advance the skills that they have. Now, once you've done that, um, you also, by the way, one more thing you can do, I'll just mention, you can also level them up. Uh, do I have enough experience to level this guy up? Looks like I do. Let's go. Boom, I can take him up a level, for example. Now, as I've done that, I can go out into the world map and show you what you're up against. And there are a number of things that you can do from the world map. You can see my city on the screen over here, my little village. Um, I can battle barbarians, I can battle monsters, I can gather. So for example, I can do a search. My search could be for barbarians. And a barbarian is something that you rally with your alliance. When you rally them down, your clan gets a gift, which is really crucial, and you get some victory rewards. In addition, as I mentioned, I can go hunting. So I really like to get gold when I go out hunting, uh, and the gold thief is what I would target. But each beast that you can go hunt gives you a different resource as shown on the screen. So if I wanted, for example, let's get some uh, food. Sure, we'll battle this Megaloceros. Um, I don't know if I can take a level five. Let's search one up and see. I'm gonna hit attack. I'm going to refill the warriors in my march. And there is a, a amount of energy that your hero has every day. It's called stamina. Right now, I have 100 out of 100. You can see it with that little food indicator. I'm gonna go and hit march. Let's see if I can win. It, it looks like I probably will. So my troops will march my way over there. I'll smash him. I'll get a report indicating that I've gained the resources from the victory. And I can do that as long as I have stamina on my heroes. So the more heroes you have, the more things you can smash, which is kind of cool because your stamina is tied to each of your heroes. So for example, if I were to target something else, let's do a search. I'll do a dire wolf this time. Let's do, uh, let's be aggressive. We go for another level five. Can I take this thing? So I still have 100 energy on this other hero. Um, and my army is full. So I can go smash over here and probably win there as well. So the more heroes you have, the more stamina that you ultimately have to run around and smash stuff, which is a big deal. But there's more. Because heroes also have economy-based roles. There are a number of heroes that are used primarily in your city, and you can see that I have them commissioning buildings in my city in order to give them boosts. For example, I've got a cook. He's deployed to one of the buildings in my city. 
And he's got an ability over here. He gains a thousand experience whenever rapid food production is used. Now that ability is perhaps not as exciting as some of the other ones I could unlock, like increasing my food output per hour, or over here, increase my food rapid production output which is pretty cool. Um, each of these heroes have, has different passive boosts, like this fisherman, also uh, related to my food gain. So there are a number of heroes you collect both outside your city and inside your city to boost the buildings and also your ability to wage battle against the beasts on the map. Now, I can go over here and I can smash the commission screen. And I, it shows you, by the way, that I've commissioned all these different heroes this particular village man um, has a ability that is activated. So I gain experience equal to 5% of my current gold output. And that's got a 22 hour cooldown. So I can just fire that off now, use, and I'm gaining extra boosts by virtue of activating those skills. So you work on your buildings, you work on your research, you smash stuff outside your city, you collect heroes, and you do this all with your clan. Your clan is critical to your progression, in part because, like you've seen in other games, you get helps, and those helps reduce research time, they reduce building time, absolutely crucial that you take advantage of the help system in this game. But in addition, there are gifts that you'll be getting based on purchases people make, and also barbarians that get rallied down. There is research that dramatically progresses your clan. For example, we could work on some of these battle-based uh, boosts, I donate resources, not only does this signal to my alliance leader that I'm active in the game and working on my account, uh, but also that I'm a team player, and eventually these boosts get pretty significant. So for example, over here, um, Encircle and Ambush is giving me Archer attack. In fact, it's giving everybody in the clan an attack boost. Um, this increases your infantry attack and so on. So working on your alliance technology is crucial, and the more that you progress your clan, the more members that you have. Right now we have a member cap of 75, but the more research points that you complete, the further you can get, you can get up to 100 members in your clan. One final thing you can take advantage of, by the way, is your clan shop. Um, using the clan contribution currency, there are a number of really valuable things that you can pick up in your shop. But let me give you some tips for a fast start when you download Primitive Era 10,000 BC. And the first tip that I've got for you is you need to, in the bottom left, tap the exclamation point and follow the missions. That includes your daily missions, your main missions, and your solo missions. Now, this will give you chapter progression, and there are good rewards for progressing through the chapters in this game, allowing you to unlock more and more buildings in your city. Definitely get that done. In addition, your daily mission, when you complete a number of those quests, will give you an epic recruitment scroll, crucial to unlock new commanders in the game. And your main mission has a lot of resources. I like to pop through these only when I really need them, because remember, your storehouse capacity is, in fact, limited. Now, from there, another thing you can do to enhance your city is that you can actually rearrange your buildings into a more optimal configuration. This item right here is called a Sun's Blessing. You get a number of them and they actually enhance buildings that are nearby them. So you can put your Sun's Blessings near certain types of buildings. Uh, if it's re you know gaining resources that you want, you could put them near resource buildings. I've got mine near a blend of buildings, which is giving those buildings some passive boosts. In addition, be sure to upgrade your clan castle. Uh, I haven't done a good job of that. Can I upgrade this now? I can. I should do that. It's worth its weight in gold. And the other thing that's really uh, good about this game that you don't see in many city builders is that you can upgrade your troop training buildings or your uh, foreteller's dome where you do your research at the same time that you actually do research, at the same time that you train troops. So I can upgrade my infantry barracks if I had enough of this charcoal. Well, to get more charcoal, we can take care of that real quick. What I'll do is I'll transport some uh, wood to the kiln. Then I hit rapid produce and I'm gaining some charcoal. Let's go. I need to do that again. I need more. I'll try again. I might fail. Let's freaking go. Success. Okay, now I have the resources I need. I can upgrade this building, boom. And at the same time that it's upgrading, I can be training troops. Now I'm doing a bad job here. I need to be training troops in all these 
troop training buildings at the same time. Uh, train some spear throwers over there as well. The last tip I will give you is that you should definitely join an active alliance to get helps quickly. Getting helps quickly will give you much more rapid progression, and there is a shocking amount of buildings and research in this game that you can blast through very, very quickly and gain faster than other people if you're just in an active alliance um, because they have a very low amount of time to upgrade, which means you can just clear through so much so quickly if you get those helps in your alliance and they're super active. I've made it my mission to check out the best city building war games that are out there and I think you might enjoy Primitive Era 10,000 BC. So again, thank you to the sponsors of today's video. Check out that link in the description to download and just by logging in over a series of days, you'll unlock this legendary hero right over here. And I mean like, I think I look pretty close to him, right? Like, all I need is the lion head on my shoulder over here, and he and I are basically the same looking. Like, I have all the same muscles. I've got the same cloak. Uh, the weapon, okay, well, maybe I gotta work on that one.